Good morning, this is Steve Chapman from Electronic World Publishing. We are at Apex 2015 in the San Diego Convention Center. Nearing the end of the third day, it's only a half day, uh, but it's been a good show and there's been lots of interesting stuff. We're going to be talking materials a little bit now. I'd like to welcome Jason Fullerton to the stand. Jason from Alpha, thank you. Thank you for taking welcome. some Thanks time. Welcome, thanks for having my time. And you're a session chair. Yes. Your first yes. chair. First year I've done chairing uh, a session. Yeah, congratulations. Good thank work you. on that. That's a nice accolade. I wanted to point that out because I think that's important. Thank you. But before we get into some of the details of uh, what you do for your day job, uh, let's talk about a perspective on the industry from your uh, side of things. What are you seeing out there? Well, so my background is as a process engineer. I work with our customers to help improve and troubleshoot their processes or help them develop new processes for new products. Um, one of the biggest things we're seeing in the industry right now is the increasing miniaturization of components. Uh, you know, both of my sessions were on materials-based problems. Uh, one of them was on head and pillow and BGAs, yep. which is becoming a bigger and bigger problem as the interconnects get smaller and smaller. Uh, and so one of the things we see is companies that are using current technology products and are developing future products that have much smaller parts on them may need to evolve into new materials and solder paste or may need to optimize their processes better with the materials they have because of the narrower process window some of the smaller components provide for in their, their printing and reflow processes. Yeah, that is good. Some of the stuff that you're doing out there with your customers, you know, you've got a feedback path to feed that back to the materials development guys. Certainly. Because you're at the front end, sharp end, trying to solve real life issues. Yes. Which is a fair way of putting it, isn't it? Yes. Because there's productivity at stake, there's reputations at stake. So, you know, you're you involved in this feedback. How does that work? Well, Alpha prides itself on our quality of our R&D and our science behind our products, as well as the skills of the people out in the field. So one of the roles I take with the company and our entire technical support group takes is to work with our customers to solve problems and then feed that back to our R&D groups to ensure that they're developing products to solve those solutions down the road. Um, I happen to be located relatively close to our America's Research Center. So uh -huh. I'm there regularly. Uh, so I have a lot of hallway conversations with different scientists and different product managers, um, as well as the formal path we have to, to uh, report out on the different tasks we take and those managers get those reports and see the problems we're solving and use those as ways to develop and guide the new materials that we're putting out on the market today. That's pretty. So you, you get to become a nuisance at the water cooler then? And to yeah. some degree, yes. Yeah, that's nice. Right. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's very productive. I mean, other things that you're coming up against out there, you know, you talked about some very specific stuff for miniaturization, you know, but what, what else are you coming across? Well, the other thing we see is that as um, electrons get smaller and they get more precise and they get more powerful, uh, so they challenge some of the limits of the no-clean solder materials and their electrical reliability. Uh, in the old days, we worried about dendrites and what yeah. I called hard failures. Well, now it's more about leakage current and you know, resistant paths that allow small amounts of leakage in the circuits that can make high-speed data processing, uh, you know, make cell phone transmissions, RF, can make them not work properly as per design. And so that's part of what we're trying to do with our products is evolve them to a state where they still solder as well as the old products, but they provide a better level of electrical performance on these new, more challenging assemblies that are out there. Okay, I mean, is this an issue with residues for, uh, let's say, typical no-clean products, or is it, is, it, is, it a different, is it a different science that's at play? Because obviously it's to do with proximity, the closer these things are together, the you know, more likely there is for something to be interact. Right. Um, but you know, what, what, is, what is it that's the focus on that? Well, it has more to do with the actual activators that are used in the yeah. flux packages. So our R&D scientists have a number of chemicals they can select that act as fluxes, but as a residue, some of them are more or less reliable from an electrical standpoint. Uh, and so the challenge is to develop materials that don't lose anything in soldering performance, but also provide a better level of electrical reliability and performance on the boards. You've, you've got a very broad range of products at your disposal. You know, that, that manufacturer at Alba. How do you decide which one's right? Is it just a question of the knowledge that you've got when, because when you're at the sharp, cold face with customers? That's exactly it. To some degree, it's my knowledge of our products, but it's also asking the customer, finding from them what they really need out of a product. Because every customer needs something different. It depends on what they're building. It depends on how much of it they're using in some cases. It depends on the, the service environment it's going to go into. If they're an OEM or an EMS company, they may need to provide, uh, use different materials to ensure that their end user is satisfied with the product that they're getting. That's a good thought. Is there ever a reluctance for the, for the, the customers to switch materials based on, I don't know, some kind of insistence from the end user client if they're a contract manufacturer or, or you've got to be consistent this side of the pond and the other side of the pond and around and, you know, do, do you come across that at all? Well there's always a resistance to change in manufacturing yeah. because you have a qualified, dedicated, controlled process. When you change materials, that's a brand new process, yeah, so you have to requalify. 
Uh, and you have to watch out for any unintended consequences that come from material changes. So that's one part of my role is to make sure the customer understands the pros and cons of any changes that they're, they're attempting to make or are proposing to make, ensure that they know how to use the materials properly, and ensure they're aware of any downsides to use of these materials and be aware of those during the development of the new products. So all that and all the technical knowledge. So apart from that, it sounds like quite an easy job. Oh, it's a piece of cake. Yeah. Anybody could do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Based on years of accumulated knowledge. Right. I mean, I've been in the industry 20 years, and you need that level of okay. experience to really be able to, to, to hash out with the customers what they're really looking for. Because uh, sometimes they don't know what they want. You have to kind of walk them through the process and ensure they understand all of the things they need out of, out of well, a material. And that's interesting. It's not only that they know what they want. I think a lot of it is not knowing what's yeah. available. I like to call it the art of what's possible. Correct. You know, you probably have some solutions that you could deliver that they didn't even know existed. Right. Uh, which is which is why they return to you. I'm right. sure we had an instance a couple months ago where I was on a trip with one of our sales managers and we went and stopped by a client that happened to be local to where we were for lunch and they described a problem they had that the sales manager locally had been trying to work with them on and I came in and said, no, wait, you guys are doing it all wrong. You're using the wrong material for this application. Instead of trying to optimize use of this material, test a different material and this problem will go away. Uh, they, they were very skeptical at first, of course, okay. but we sent them a sample, they tried the material, I got a phone call three weeks later saying, you were a lifesaver, thank goodness you came by, because that's exactly what we needed it now. We use this new material, we have zero problems at all on this new product we're developing. So that was a good day. That was a very was good a day. You day. have good days and bad days in this job, and yeah, that was a no, great no, no. day. I'm <laughs> well, talking about good days or good days. How was the show for you? Oh, the show was great. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is the biggest show in the U.S. Mm -hmm. for electronics. It's always the premier show. Um, I've been coming to this since 2005. I presented previously. I've been here as a customer. I'm now here as a okay. session chair. Yeah. So I've taken a lot of yeah. roles over the years. Uh, you know, everybody that's anybody in manufacturing and electronics is here at this show. Plus, all of the knowledge that's shared upstairs in the conferences and in the committee meetings is a really important way to drive the industry forward. That's excellent. Well, that's superb, and I wish you every success with the hour that's left for the show, uh, but for the rest of 2015. And uh, Jason, thank you very much yeah. for coming by. Thank Great you for having me. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.